Hi, superheroes. I'm Pink Phoenix, coming to you from Purdue University College of Veterinary Medicine's League of Vetahumans. Today, our special guest on Vetahumans Live is Lady Ocelot. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> of course. Thanks for having me. <laughs> to get started, can you tell us your story? Uh, yeah. So, uh, I was born in Puerto Rico, so um, I'm from there, and I, um, I was actually raised there as well. Um, decided to be a vet, um, went to college uh, there in Puerto Rico. I did high school and college back there, and then um, fit, went to Purdue University um, to get my DVM. And here you are. What are you doing now? Here I am. So right now I'm an associate veterinarian at Loma Animal Hospital. That's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I work with small animals and exotics and also pigs and goats. Um, but that's about it. <laughs> that sounds excellent. <laughs> Tell us about your superhero name. How did you decide on Lady Ocelot? Well, that took a lot of time for to for me to like find a name for some reason um i love cats and i love big cats um and then you know i know that all my other friends had like animal uh names for their you know superhero name and i'm like okay i kind of want one too um and i just like ocelots i don't know they just have that cute face and they're not as big as the other big cats um so yeah i went with that one it's a beautiful name. Thanks. Okay. Can you describe the moment that you decided you had to be a veterinarian? Wow. Well, that's, um, that's a big story. So um, I want to say back in high school, um, I started just shadowing my, my pet's veterinarian and you know, I, I kind of like always since I was a kid, I knew there was something um, that I wanted to be something with like science and medicine regarding that. Um, and then when I started shadowing my pet's veterinarian, I was like, yeah, I, I love this. I definitely, this is what I want. Um, and there was some time like in college where I was like, but do I really want to be a veterinarian? Mostly because I have to go abroad to study. And that was the biggest thing for me was, do I really want to go abroad? Or, you know, that to me, that felt like a little bit not as doable. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe in college, I was like, well, started college. I went into biomedical sciences. And the plan was to actually become a human medicine doctor and md um because we do have a, a medicine like a we do have schools for medicine in puerto rico um for human medicine we don't have a vet school um so you know when i was in college i was like okay well that's a plan um but then i started um doing some like summer internships where i would have to go um somewhere in the states um and uh, work, it, it was always veterinary related, um, like I couldn't let it go. Um, and then I, during college too, I started um, taking like animal focus classes that were not even part of my curriculum, but uh, those were just my electives. Um, so then when I started doing the internships, I was like, you know what, I can, I can do this. I can just like leave home and live somewhere else and actually pursue my dream. Um, and also, I did take a macroanatomy class during one summer as well, where I had to dissect a human and I could not do it. I loved the medicine part. It was amazing. Um, but I just, I mean, I did it and it was fine, but I just didn't enjoy it as much. Uh, so it's like, okay, I cannot do this. So yeah, after that, I was like, I'm just going to work towards, you know, becoming a veterinarian. And I let go of that fear of just going abroad and being away from my family, but they were so supportive through all of it. So it just, you know, worked out. Well, I'm so glad you decided to come to Purdue. I miss you so much. And I know, me too. <laughs> it's amazing being able to talk with you. Yeah. As you uh, look back to those moments, are you the kind of veterinarian you dreamed of being or did your career path change? Um, 
I think I am the kind of veterinarian that I dreamed of being. Um, only uh, fun fact is, uh, during vet school, I thought I'm never going to work with um, large animals. I'm never going to work with food animals. I didn't even take a rotation on those. Um, and it was great. So I always was focused on small animals with a little bit of exotics. And then I come, I come here and I was like, oh, so I have to work with pigs and goats. And it's been a learning pro process for, for me because, you know, I didn't take those rotations. But um, I think it's made me a better veterinarian overall, just like, you know, having to do, which is what it's about. It's having to do a lot of research and get out of your comfort zone and um, be there for a pet in need. So, so it's been it's been fun, <laughs> but that's about it. Cannot see a horse or a cow. <laughs> do you love the pigs and goats though? I do. I do. I, in the beginning, I was like, eh, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you know, it, just practicing medicine on them. is just different than loving the pet. I do love the animal and it's always been, Oh my God, I want to cuddle with it. But um, just knowing the medicine, um, that's, that's where the challenge comes in. Uh, but I, I mean, I can say that I see them almost on a daily basis, at least pigs. So, um, yeah, it's, it's actually been really nice. <laughs> what did you think being a veterinarian would be like, and what's it really like? Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know that, that it's, you know, that different from what we think it is. Um, I think coming out of school, it's great because you get to do so many things and you have all of these um, resources and um, uh, you get to actually be able to, I guess, just run some tests and um, get an answer versus at least, you know, private practice wise, it's a little bit more limited than that. Um, and I think that's the biggest challenge as a, a you know, working in private practice is to, you know, everything you need to do to like try to get an answer or make um, the pet better. Um, but it's, there's always going to be a challenge, whether it's income or, um, you know, finances um, from the owner. Um, and then you just have to think about what's going to give you the best answer and just like prioritize on testing. So I think that's the biggest thing. That's a little bit different from what we think it is, but, um, I think it's something that comes with practice and it's, um, overall, I mean, you get to help a lot of animals regardless. So it's great. That's excellent. All right. I want to hear about your best day ever as a vet. So far. <laughs> I honestly gave this a lot of thought and I don't know that I've had a best day ever yet. Um, I have a real, a lot of really good days. Um, I think every single time I get to treat an animal that comes in and we're clueless about what's going on and, you know, you just start your hunt and you're researching and um, you put all, all these years of vet school into practice and then they actually get to go home and the owners are super grateful and very happy and you kind of like get to reunite them with their family. I think that's that is just so big for me. And it's, I, I feel like I have, you know, a lot of those, I think um, it's not always going to be like that, but I think it balances well um, within good moments and, you know, not so great moments. Um, but I think every single time um, that I have one of those, it's, it just makes my day. So I leave for those. <laughs> Such a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Well, what's the most exciting thing you've gotten to do as a vet so far? <laughs> I think it's treating so many, like, exotics that I've, I never thought I would be seeing. Um, one time we had a capybara at work. Um, I've seen a lot of oxalatals. Um it's just so, so many, like, I can think, like, peacocks and stuff like that that we've had. But um, it's just, 
so like a wide variety. You never know what's going to walk through that door and you're just going to be like, oh, okay, great. And here in Vegas, there's a lot of, um, you know, either even like big hotels that have like these wild animals and, um, you know, other like owners just like having those too. So every single time we get one of those that it, we get monkeys sometimes, it's like, oh, okay, great. Like, I didn't think I was seeing, I was going to be seeing one of these, but <laughs> um, so yeah, I think um, just having that and every single day is fun. You get to see something new um, and you get to learn a lot about a new species every single time. So that sounds amazing. And <laughs> it's the perfect segue. What's new and exciting in the learning world for you? All right. Well, um, right now, I am actually learning about um, endoscopy in exotic animals, um, like avian reptiles um, and fish and stuff like that, um, taking a C on that because we do have that capability. Um, but I think, like I said, every single day I learn something new, it, you know, every single day. It's mostly with exotics because there's a lot of research that come with that. Um, but yeah, right now, and then I did um, just recently um, start getting like more practice with ultrasound and um, feel I've done several on my own, which is great. Um, uh, and every single day, it's a, it's a learning learning process and get to grow as a veterinarian and expand those things that you can do. Awesome. So when you're not learning and growing, what are you doing for fun? <laughs> All right. So um, I do like hiking a lot. So I think that's mainly what I do um, on my days off when possible. Just go for a, for a hike. Um, other times, I mean, during the summer, pool, you know, just like – resting and um, just soaking up the sun because we don't get to see that a lot during our working days. Um, <laughs> and then being here also uh, gives me the opportunity of do, doing like getting some staycations and just like, you know, get a hotel for like two days or so and just um, you don't have to like leave the stay just like um, I don't know, just get away get away from, you know, um, the veterinary world for a little while. Um, we're also very close to other states that have really, ni uh, really nice uh, parks, like national parks. Uh, there's, you know, you, places in Utah, Arizona, and they're like within driving distance. So I try to do those um, things as well as I can. It's something that, you know, needs to be planned, but definitely doable. Um, so that's usually what I, what I try to do my days off <laughs> it must be awesome to live in a vacation destination <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it definitely is <laughs> so tell me about your superpowers and how you're using them to support and inspire <laughs> others <laughs> um i think right now i'm being on like like being a mentor for uh, new grads or, you know, new doctors that come in um, to our work. And uh, we do have a lot of externs that come in and a, a, a big amount of them are actually from Purdue, which is great. Um, and I get to see like third years, fourth years, they come to our workplace and um, we're just there for them and just mentoring them. I think that's the biggest thing for me right now. I love doing it. I love, um, I mean, I was definitely right there um, uh, at some point in my life, and I did have really good mentorship, so I try to be that for them as well. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I enjoy doing a lot. Well, I try to send them your way. <laughs> I, uh, please. <laughs> we love having them. <laughs> So what inspirational message do you have for aspiring veterinarians who are listening? Of course. Um, so always just follow your dream. Don't give up. 
you know, it's it's not it's not always gonna be easy or happiness. There's gonna be challenges, um, especially in this field. And you know, we all know that this field is very challenging. Um, just know that you know, never give up on your dreams. Um, if this is what you want to do, just you know, work for it and don't give up. And there's always like a lot of support around you. Even if you don't see it, there's always going to be someone that is going to be there for you. And um, I think we we have this community is very supportive with each other. So I, I do love that about, you know, veterinarians. And, and yeah, I think that's mostly it. Just, you know, I know that some days are going to be hard, whether you're in vet school, uh, whether you're a vet and all that, um, and uh, or you're applying to vet school. It's not the easiest thing to do either, but keep it up. Like, it took me a couple tries applying to vet school until um, I was able to go to Purdue. So um, never give up. Just, you know, if this is what you want to do, you, you're going to make it work. That's beautiful. And look at you now. I am so proud of you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much for being on the show, Lady Ocelot. You can learn about other League of Veta Humans superheroes at VetaHumans.org. If you like this show, and I know that you did, please subscribe, rate, and share it with your friends. And remember, use your powers for good.